Imagine we are bringing the kicks and snares to our project directly as waveforms, like this. In my experience, this is a little bit difficult to experiment with different sounding samples uh, that we want to use in the same pattern. That is why I decided to use the MIDI data to trigger these samples. That way, we can experiment with multiple number of samples without changing the pattern. So let's begin. First, we go to the instruments. Open the drums. Let me select one. RT7070. Drag and drop it here. We have to make sure that this option is selected. Okay, now wait for it to load. This is the beat maker. Now on observing, we see that the output is coming only from the first track. And that is because all these paths are directed towards the first audio channel, which we have to change manually. Now, we might not have to do this every time, because many of the VST plugins can load with the outputs already directed towards separate audio channels. Now, we can go ahead and input the MIDI data that is going to trigger these samples. Oh, piano roll and step sequence are unavailable. That's because it's not a MIDI track, so we create one. Right click, insert MIDI track. We have to make sure that the output of this track is directed towards the VST plugin that we want to use. Now when I press the MIDI keyboard with this track being selected, this happens. Like any other MIDI VST, we can open up the piano roll. But we know that this is not the fun part of beat making, and that is of course the step sequencer. Behold the cakewalk step sequencer. Now let's make a beat. By default, the step sequencer provides notes from C3 to B3. The notes above B3 has to be added in. We got an extra EVO. Delete that. In fact, it's better to delete every note that we won't be using. Renaming for better and faster understanding. That's enough for now. Time to get a look at the console. What we are seeing here are the audio channel outputs of the VST plugin that we have used. To control the audio output channels, I'm gonna add a stereo bus. Rename it to drums. Selecting all the audio output channels of the VST. Now we are going to send the output of these audio channels. Select track outputs and we are going to direct it to drums. And it's working. Well, looking at the tracks, I can imagine the mess it's going to be if this project is gonna be a huge with a lot of tracks in it. To avoid this, I'm going to select every track related to the drums VST and add it into a new folder. Now, everything related to the drums VST is a single track. By default, the looping function of a step sequencer in Cakewalk is enabled. We can copy the sequence further the timeline by dragging the corner.
This is the method by which I make drum beats using a VST plugin with preloaded drum samples. But what if we want to use our own personal samples? And that's how I found out about the drum machine, Citella. Making sure that this option is selected. Taking a look at the sample, we see that all the output is directed towards the first audio channel. We can direct it separately by making sure this option is selected. These are the preloaded drum packs. Let's clear the currently loaded one. Now we go to the media library in the media and drag in our favorite sample. I think I like this kick more than the one I selected before. I think this is enough for a demo. Now let's tune these samples to the key of our project, which we will assume to be in the key of C. To find the key of samples, I use the sampler TX16WX. Starting by dragging all the percussion samples I have used in this project to the sampler. Open the waves option, right click, detect, pitch and we have the pitch of each sample. We see that the kick is an Asia which is not in the key of C. So we have to change it either to A or B. We go to the tuning in Citala. Okay, tuning. CT as in sent. Checking again, we see that the kick is in A sharp with a fine tuning of positive 42. To change it into the key of C, we are going to make it and A. Right click then type in minus 142. Now the kick is an A which is in the key of C. Now we can go ahead and tune the other samples. Deleting the sampler to free up space and the track to make it clean. Now every sample will be in the key of our project and the step sequencer can be used just like before. Let me open the project in which I learned to use the step sequencer. So this is the project and here are the drums. Now let's say we want a variation in here, hold alt and left click to separate. Right click and we select the option, unlink step sequencer clips. Now this has become a unique clip and the changes we make to this clip will not be transferred or inherited to the other clips. And there you go folks. If you found this video to be useful by even the tiniest bit, do let me know by clicking that like button. And if you want to be a part of my journey of learning music production by Cakewalk by BandLab, consider subscribing. Do it! Just do it! Also, 
Feel free to comment ideas and suggestions. I really appreciate it. Thank you. See you in the next video.